So welcome to Magi Book. It was actually two, uh, what did I say, two years ago today that we filmed the first one. Uh, we're filming this on Super Bowl Sunday, February 1st, 2015. With me, as always, is my hetero life mate, Myers Josh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> as you can see, he hasn't learned to speak much more than the last time you saw us. Um, what we're... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to have a prize a little later today, which is a Hofsinzer card. If you don't know what a Hofsinzer card is, um, we'll be showing that a little bit later. Um, and we'll figure out a way that you can win this. I think we're going to post this on YouTube, so I think it's going to be a comment thing, um, answering a question or maybe the number comment that's sent down uh, by a unique person. I don't know. We'll talk about it in the breaks. But one of the things we're going to be talking about is... is People overcoming obstacles and using magic to do so. My initial idea with this uh, was with mental health and how individuals with mental illness have been able to utilize uh, magic in order to, to overcome that and, and be, I don't know, more productive in society, engage in society. And one of the things I didn't know is Michael Skinner was an individual who apparently had a diagnosis of schizophrenia. If it wasn't schizophrenia, it was something along those lines. Um, I didn't know about this until recently, and then I read through the uh, 98 Genie Memorial magazine. I have more details in there. But it just baffles my mind that somebody with schizophrenia was so amazing at magic. Because um, one of my cardinal rules, I, I am a mental health professional. Josh works in the mental health industry as well, which is why I thought it was interesting is I never perform for somebody who, who has a schizophrenia diagnosis. Or, but normally when I'm seeing them, they're, they're having a psychotic break and they're hallucinating actively, so I don't ask them to pick a card. But anyway, um, we're not just going to touch on that. Uh, we're going to start our first clip off, which I think is a terrific metaphor, and I want to thank Jason Michaels for giving me permission to use this. It's his routine at TED Talk uh, in Chattanooga where he talked about his story and how he was able to overcome a, metal, a medical diagnosis by utilizing magic and the performing arts. So we're going to roll that right now. Imagine being a young boy trapped inside your own body. The straitjacket was invented in 1790 as a way to treat mental illness and as a means to protect hospital staff, fellow inmates, and out of control patients from themselves. It was believed to be impossible to escape from a straitjacket. Now let me tell you a little story. The seven-year-old was seated in the passenger side next to his dad on his way to school. As he traveled on his way to school, he was continuously rubbing his chin against his collarbone and he couldn't stop. He'd been doing this on and off for several days and his neck was starting to get red and irritated. The boy was frustrated. He just kept doing it over and over and over, and he could not stop. Six years later, the 13-year-old sat in the doctor's office. He'd been to numerous doctors before, but none of them really knew what the problem was. There were talks of obsessive compulsive behavior, movement disorders, and ADD, but this doctor was different. This pediatric neurologist knew exactly what the problem was. Tourette's syndrome, and she started the teenager on medication that did little to stop the annoying tics and twitches. Uh, 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 
Three years later, the 16-year-old was focused, reading a script. When he focused like this, he, the annoying ticks and twitches associated with Tourette's syndrome that he had had since birth seemed to vanish. He'd never seen a script before, much less auditioned for a play. In fact, to some of his friends, it was mind-boggling that a 16-year-old guy would dare step out onto a stage in front of an audience where he would undoubtedly be judged. The 39-year-old man who had taken numerous medications throughout his life in the hopes that they would stop the annoying ticks and twitches stood on the side of the stage. He knew based on his experience over 20 years ago that the moment he did step onto the stage, those ticks, you know, the, the ticks that he was told would go away as he got older, yeah, those, he knew that they would in fact go away for a moment. And as he listened to his introduction, he thought it was strange that he had both an uncontrollable movement disorder like Tourette's syndrome and a genuine talent and passion for performing for live audiences. He thought about time spent on cruise ships in performing arts centers and at private functions. And then his name was announced and he stepped out on stage before you here today. That was Jason Michaels at the Chattanooga TED Talk conference. You can look it up. The whole thing's on YouTube. It's about 19 minutes long. Jason Michaels is a full-time performer, um, lives uh, in my area in Nashville, Tennessee, but travels the whole country all throughout the world. Um, as he mentioned, he does cruise ships, and, and he's just a really cool guy and a really nice guy. Um, and I was very fortunate to, to know Mr. Michaels. So... Anyway, we're going to go on to another person I referenced, um, Michael Skinner. Michael Skinner is a ma the magician's magician, one of the magician's magician. I guess there's been a handful of them in history. Uh, Michael's knowledge of magic um, I don't think could be surpassed by anyone. His, his repertoire, he knew so much about the art. Um, Jeannie recently put out uh, the Skinner tapes, which I had here, but I don't have here anymore. And... That's amazing. It's uh, conversations that he was having with another magician. They would send cassette tapes. If you don't know what cassette tapes are, we're, we're much older than you. Wait, do you know what cassette tapes are? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and they would correspond, sending these audio tapes describing magic and effects and theories. And it's just fantastic. I, I just really enjoy that. Just hearing this guy talk about magic and the depth of what she thought about it at... Um, but anyway, enough rambling about my love of Michael Skinner. Um, let's watch him on The Carson Show doing the uh, three-card Monty routine, uh, straight out of Stars of Magic and the Scarney book. So, go. <laughs> Tony, I wonder if I could have that glass and that right. pack of cards. Uh, okay, Pat. Huh? Okay. Well, we won't need a glass for a moment. We'll set that aside. You know, remember the old three-shell game where you have three walnut shells and a pea? Everybody's right. heard of that game. Well, there's a counterpart with cards, Tony. The same game can be used with cards using only three. Three cards. The idea is to find the one red card. I have two black ones and a queen. I'll bend them to make it easy to pick these up. Now, I'll show you how the game works, and we'll try a couple rounds, all right? When I toss these cards, I can place the queen sometimes in the center. And sometimes when I toss the cards, the queen will be over here. I know where it's going. I'll do it very slowly. Let's see what happens. Tony, I'll do it very slow. Which one would you say is the red card? Don't guess. I want you to be sure. I don't always put it there, you see. Sometimes I put it on the same end, sometimes on the other end. Joe, we'll try it again. Which one would you say is the queen? <laughs> you know, suppose I show you both black cards. I usually don't do that, but I will this evening. That makes it easy if I show you both black cards. I'm sure most of you probably bet here it never is. You see, it's always the one in the center. Okay, you know, am I going too fast, please? Yes, you are. Well, I'm going to bet some money this time. I'm willing to bet. Tony, would you like to make a little wager? Sure. I can do it one sure. more time. Okay, right. what would you like to bet? Well, no, a dollar is fine. All right, you're going to bet. 
All right, now I only have one red card. I right. don't have two. I have the one red queen. Right. I'm going to do it very slowly so you can see what happens. Which one do you think is the red one? <laughs> that one right there. Very good. Have you played this game before? No, I'm just playing attention. You want to go double or nothing? You got time? I'll double right. or nothing. Right. Only two black cards and the one red one. Now, I'll, maybe I'm moving too slow. I'll speed it up just a little bit. But I'll always show you where it is so you can see right to the end, okay? The one red card. Okay. Now, which one do you think? <laughs> this? Oh, that corner's bent a little bit. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Let me straighten that out. We got to get that. Three, two, one. Here's John. <laughs> so that was Michael Skinner <laughs> doing his three card Monty routine. Well, the, it's not his three card Monty. It's his. He does it so well, it's now his. He owns it. Thanks, thanks for the introduction. <laughs> so, um, remember, we are going to, we still have to come up with how someone can win a Hofsenzer card. Um, so, Somebody's going to be able to win a Hofstadter card. Stay tuned for that. We'll show a little bit of what that is if you don't know what it is. Um, I want to break kind of from our, uh, our theme a little bit of magic being utilized to overcome hardships. Um, although I think the next person I'm going to talk about has had some and he talked um, uh, pretty freely about it on an interview at the Magic Newswire. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail. If you want to check out the interview, it's still a value... Uh, <laughs> valuable still still available um at the magic newswire just you can google that there's a lot of different podcasts there and that's a really great free resource of just hearing magicians real magicians talk about magic um but i want to talk about dan harlan and his work with the tarbell course of magic it is an amazing piece of work he's been doing you can subscribe to these videos and you get um every lesson teaching every effect in the course um, now bi-weekly. There are 22 lessons out right now, and every two weeks there's a new one that's like two hours long. Um, initially they were about an hour long, but as things get more complicated and, and in-depth, it really takes a lot longer to, to describe. Um, one of my first calls, he's just staring blankly at the camera. I was. One of the things initially I wanted to do with Magi Book is actually go through and teach the whole Tarbell course uh, as a video series. So when I found out Penguin was going to be releasing this. I was not happy myself as I had been working on this for a long time, but now watching, and you can get lessons one and two for free at their website. Um, watching it, they picked the right guy. Dan Harlan is the right guy to learn the Tarbell course from. He is so smart. He does so much work with the material that's there. He updates it. And he really, I think, brings it to the core, the, the themes and the thoughts of, of what this this magic is and how to update it and how to utilize it. And one thing I've really learned, and I, I kind of knew this, but seeing Dan describe this stuff, is how much work and effort can go into something that a normal person who's not a magician would look at and be like, that is way too much work to get that. I don't, I'm not going to do all of that just to get this. Whereas I think magicians, if you're, if you're willing to put a lot of effort in for a moment of wonder that's quite the appeal and Dan teaches you how to do that so with permission from Penguin Magic I'm gonna roll a clip of Dan Harlan doing part of his Tarbell course if I don't get permission from them then you're just gonna see a dancing monkey in its place instead and you can go to Penguin Magic and check it out so go this is an awareness test how many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? gonna be a magi v wife skit 
Tony <laughs> told me I've told you that story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Tony told you that that's how he was. Uh, practice, he's told to practice seconds in the dark. So he's sitting there in the dark next to his wife. She's asleep. Just seeing him deal. <laughs> underneath the sheets or something what like that. What are you doing? You know, I don't even think it was that. I don't think it was underneath the sheets. But she just saw this repetitive motion of him dealing <laughs> seconds real fast. What are you doing? Dealing seconds. Right. Sure you are. Oh, that's what you call it. You now. deal at seconds in 3 a.m. <laughs> in the middle of the night by yourself. Anyway, we might include that. It's a fun little story. Um, anyway, that was uh, either Dan Harlan performing some magic, his spin on Tarbell, or <laughs> a dancing chimpanzee. So, um, let's return to our theme. Um, so, one of the people that really influenced me, uh, the plan is to make a documentary on different individuals and, and things that they've overcome by utilizing magic. Uh, I myself um, have found a voice with magic. It definitely is a healing thing for me. Um, and I'm not going to get into my story because it'll be on the documentary. I don't know. Maybe not. But the, the person who really blew me away and, and made me inspired to to want to do this is I, I, I was able to meet someone who just I never would have thought that his story was so in-depth as it is um, and he goes by the name of Mormo I'm not gonna say his actual name um, without his permission but uh, this is a guy who has had a, like a very difficult upbringing has experienced a lot of amazing things I'm just fortunate that he was able to share some of that with me I mean he also has a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder uh, for people who don't know what schizoaffective disorder, this is a very crude way of putting it, but think of schizophrenia mixed with bipolar disorder, um, which is manic depression, which is the documentary. We'll get more into that kind of stuff. I've got two physicians that are willing to help assist in making of this documentary, and I've got a couple other mental health uh, professionals, and I'm going to make Josh edit it all. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, which reminds me, we have an interview with Myers Josh. We thought we'd actually get to go inside the mind of this man. Um, given that he doesn't talk a whole lot, we'd see what's beneath the surface, so to speak. Um, but anyway, I want to show a clip of Mormo doing his version of a book test. I really like the theme. It's all about um, Sylvia Brown and how she's psychic and how he's more psychic than she is and he does it using her own books. I also like his dry delivery. I don't know if he intends to do this, but he uses a line a lot, which is, so it's pretty obvious I have special powers, but he says it in such a dry fashion it's, I find it comical and I think that he does it on purpose. Like that's part of his character. Um, so it works for me on that level. Other people I bet watch that and are like, yes, you do have powers because he, his, his, persona is his character so here's a clip of Mormo and we'll be right back and now by this point in the show you can probably tell that I'm a pretty talented individual I have gifts but there are people out there who only pretend to have gifts and they can actually cause a lot of problems uh, for example you probably heard about those girls who disappeared in Cleveland and then 10 years later they were rescued. Well, one of those girls, their mom was so worried she went on a talk show to speak to a psychic and to ask if her daughter was alive or not. And her daughter was alive, but the psychic, whose name was Sylvia Brown, told the mother that the daughter was dead. And unfortunately the mother passed away before she ever found out that her daughter was actually alive. So yeah, a lot of bad things can happen when people pretend, and I'm going to prove tonight that I have better prediction powers than Sylvia Brown, and I'm going to use her own book to do it. And so first I'd like to hand off this envelope, if you could just hold on to that, don't open it. We'll get back to that later in the show. And now what I've done is I made a bookmark, and you can see it has a slit cut in it. And we're going to use that slit to pick out a word at random. And so now if I could get a volunteer from the audience, you sir, could you help me out with this? Um, if you could just tell me to stop at any time as I flip through the pages. Stop. 
All right, is that fair? All right, so now I'm going to put the bookmark in the book without peeking, and now I'll move up and down the book with the bookmark. If you could just tell me when to stop. Stop. All right. And now if you could look through that sled and tell me the first, or don't tell me, just look at the first word you see and memorize it for me. Okay, I can't see very well. So, <laughs> okay. you better ask me. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, ma'am, could you read the first word you see in that slip there? Yes. All right. <laughs> I also don't have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and now... Could you just say out loud what the word was? Mystical. Mystical. Ma'am, could you open up the envelope? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, folks. And, uh... So my name's Mormo. I have a clipboard in the lobby. You can just sign your email in there to subscribe to my newsletter. I hope you enjoyed the performance as much as I enjoyed performing it, and have a nice night. And welcome back. That was Mormo doing his book test. Uh, Mormo has done a lot of magic. He's got, um, I don't know if he still has his YouTube channel up. He might, but if you look around for it, you can find Mormo. He's got a newsletter. Um, he does a lot of writing on the punk rock scene, um, which is another passion of his, his, his music. Um, but we're going to get into how to win the Hofsenzer card, which is a card when held up to the light, and we'll show images of it while I talk about it, um, displays one card through the light, like on the back, if you see the back design. And as you show the other side, it's a totally different card. Um, if you win this, I'll be happy to send you uh, kind of a quick lesson on what the initial use of the the Harlan or, or the Harlan card. I've been talking about Dan, Dan Harlan a little too much. <laughs> the Hofsenzer card was used for um, different ways. You can use it for different uh, locations, um, different venues is what I meant to say. So the way to win this is we're going to go back to a Tom Mullica question. Tom Mullica has recently returned to magic. I think that's worth noting. For the long time, since 97 or 98, he's been retired, and just, I believe, 2014, end of 2014, he's returned to magic. And his goal is to make a Tom foolery in Las Vegas, which is what he had in Atlanta, Georgia, for so long. Now, before going to his skeleton show, he moved to Vegas with a plan to open, and I don't think it ever opened, a specific place that there were advertisements for. Johnny Thompson was a backer for. I think he had other backers. What was the name? This is a hard one. What was the name of the place he was going to open in Vegas? And what was the clientele he was trying to cater to? Um, I don't know if people are going to get the second part of that. If you own one of those advertisements, you will. Um, but the first person who comments in the YouTube section with that answer, I will send a Hofsenzer card to. Um, I don't know what that was, but... <laughs> the comment section we got... down here. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. So anyway, um, let's swing it back to um, a clip of Michael Skinner doing his cups and balls routine, which is really great. Um, then we're going to show a clip of Tim Conover uh, doing some sleight of hand magic. Now, Tim passed away, and Tim dealt with um, some mental illness and unfortunately ended up taking his own life. Um, but he was a very successful mentalist, and before that was a magician of, of the highest caliber. So I just wanted to throw him in there, too. Um, trying to get permission to, to kind of chronicle some of these people's lives in this documentary that I'd like to make. So we're going to do Skinner, then Tom or Tim Conover, um, and then we're going to come back with a special interview with Myers Josh. See you in a minute.
What do you need, kid? Well, I'm going to use these coffee cups okay. this time, Tony. We'll use the three cups and this table knife. Right. I'll stand up so you can see this a little better. Now, when I say impromptu, I really mean that, because in addition to these cups and this knife, I borrowed three cherries from backstage. Somebody was making some Manhattans. I managed to steal three cherries here. We've got one for each cup. This is cup number one on your right, two in the center, and cup number three. So watch the cups, watch the cherries, one at a time. There's one. That's number two. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. And the third. This gives me one, two, and three. I may be moving too quickly. I'm going to slow things up a bit, and we'll cover this center cherry. Jack, we take the one from the right hand, and that moves very quickly from here to join the two in the center, you see? We can do it with either the right hand or the left hand. It doesn't make any difference which direction I go. There's nothing in the end cups. I always have three for the center. And you know, I can recall when I used to practice this years ago, I could never decide how to begin. In other words, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could start with three cherries under the center, make a motion, and have one appear here? It wasn't always there. When I get back to the center, there's one missing. I thought, where could it be? It must be over here. Of course, we can straighten things out in a hurry by putting one under each, if we like to do it that way. You know, sometimes I have skeptics, Joe, that don't actually believe I place one under each cup, so I'll show you that there can be no doubt in your mind if you actually see the cherry at all times. You've there's one convert too. You know, I agree. <laughs> Now, let's suppose just for a moment that I was willing to explain a portion of this. If so, it wouldn't be necessary to use all three cherries. I don't need the one from uh, cup number three, nor the one from cup number one. So that leaves how many in the center cup, the one in the middle? One. That's right. I just want to see if you're paying attention. But it doesn't explain how this one comes back over here. <laughs> but actually, I only pretend to place the cherry in the pocket. I just make a motion like this and close my empty hand. Then by keeping the fingers curled around the cherry, when I lift the cup, it appears to come out from underneath. See, that's the illusion. But it's no illusion if you see the cherry go in the pocket. Now, how many would you say run to the center cup? Oh. Two. <laughs> Got to get it sooner or later, actually, than three. <laughs> Close. So the only explanation is perhaps I had some extra ones. If I did, Jack, which cup would they be under? The far cup. The far cup? Well, you're right in the way. <laughs> 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 Right with the fingertips. Little change first, I got the bag back. Okay, now it happens right here at the fingertips, right out there at the fingertips. Small motion for you. It's all this Chinese coin. The idea is just to keep your eye on the coin. It's all in the shake. Just the shake, it grows. Double in size. See, I cheated you. I kept it underneath the hank. I'll show you how it works. Just the squeeze. That's all it takes. Drop through the hank. Unless you give it a shake, now the big one's on top, the little one's on the bottom, and the only difference is, is that it's grown. See, this is the big one, this is the medium-sized one, and that right there at the fingertips is the little one. If I used any more, you'd obviously say, oh, gee, you have a little friend, he helps me out. <laughs>